hundred times in the world. Time enough for life to unfold all the precious things love has in store. We have all the love in the world. If that's all we have, you will find we need nothing more. Every step of the way will find. With the care of the world far behind us, we have all the time in the world just for love, nothing more, nothing less. This was a 10 day trip covering over 2,000 miles by the time we got back home. Really, really nice weather. Met some great people and had a wonderful time in Bonnie, Scotland. We tend to do Scotland once or twice a year doing training seminars. Patreon members and we also do seminars all over the country meeting up with members who support me if you'd like to watch those videos you'll have to join Patreon and come on over and watch the members work their dogs on training seminars on group sessions and one to one Have you switched off yet? It's a working holiday. Dogs are always with us, as you can see. This is when we went to Scotland and we did the training seminars in Scotland. And we met up with the Patreon members. My job as a gun dog trainer is living with these guys. It's a lifestyle. It's, a, it's sacrifices we have to make in some ways, in other ways, we are so blessed to be working with these wonderful, wonderful dogs. When I take my dogs with me, I expect my dogs to behave themselves, whether they're in the trailer or in the back of the car. On this occasion, we took the trailer with us. 
and while we were doing the training seminars, these dogs just had to sit in the trailer all day. But while we were away, and we were away for 10 days, these dogs had some wonderful times, good freedom and a good free running up in Scotland. And the scenery is to die for. I've always loved Scotland. It's far from the madding crowd. It's so much quieter. You can get on with training the way you want to train. People seem to leave you alone. And it's a wonderful, wonderful place to take your dogs to go on holiday as well. People ask me, you know, why don't you just put them in boarding or why don't you get someone to look after them? I don't think no one can look after them like you look after your own dogs. The commitment and the time that we put into these dogs is part and parcel of the passion we have. And that's what it's about. It's about having that passion. And if you like going on holiday with your dogs, then that's part of your life that you're just so lucky to have, isn't it? And these are my mates as well as my working companions. And they've got to have a quality of life. They've got to have a quality of life. There's times where they've got to sit in a kennel and just switch off and wait for me because we've all got busy lives. But also, these are my working dogs. These are not pets. These are working dogs. And it doesn't matter whether you've got a pet or a working dog. My videos are there to help you get the best out of them. Get the best out of your dog and your relationship with your dog. And that's what it's about. This, this site is about gun dog training and helping people get to a standard that they can be really proud of their dogs and they can take them to places where other people would fear taking them because they'd fear losing them. And the whole idea is these dogs want to be with me. They love to be with me, as you can see. They just love to be with me because the fun element is with me. Do these look like dogs that have been suppressed and 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 beaten into submission and turned into robots? No, these are good quality working dogs that I enjoy having because they've got this freedom and yet I've got that fun element and that control when I need it. And to me, as I've progressed in life with my dogs, my principles have changed slightly. It used to be all about winning. It used to be all about competition. Now it's about quality of life. The older you get, the more you want quality of life. I don't want to be training 20 dogs and burning myself out. I want to be picking the dogs I choose to train and getting the best of those dogs. And it's not all about numbers, it's not all about money, it's about the enjoyment, the lifestyle you have. And the lifestyle I have, training these dogs, is a privilege where the owners let me train their dogs and they pay me for it. And if I was wealthy, I'd still have this lifestyle because I love what I do. I love the life I have. And it's important that if you've got a job and you enjoy that job, Life is going to be much, so much more fun, and that's what it's supposed to be, in my eyes. It doesn't matter where we go, what we do, these dogs are always looking back at me and going, come on, Dad, what are we doing now? What are we doing now? You've got one there, look, independent, swimming around the lake, thinking, yes, this is lovely. The others are not too sure at the moment, but they'll get in. They'll get in. And at the end of the day, the young dogs follow the older dogs, and the young dogs learn from the older dogs. As you can see, look, they're learning learning to get in there and have fun with it and it doesn't come straight away but I don't force them I don't force them now they enter water like good ones because they love it they absolutely love it and that's what it's about it's about having fun with that dog letting that dog enjoy itself and gain that trust with you and gain that confidence that it wants to please you as you can see this dog here looking at me all it wants to do is please me it wants to be my mate Right. Some dogs are more sure of themselves. Some dogs need that little bit of confidence. All dogs are different. And that's the important thing when you've got dogs. You, you must realize that not all dogs are the same. You pick up a gun dog book and you think, oh, I'll train me dog. They don't tell you how to get over the problems. They don't tell you when you've got a sensitive dog or a, a bolst bolstery dog, a dog with oh, too much confidence and you've got to bring that confidence down a little bit. And when I say bring the confidence down, I don't mean destroy it. But some dogs try and take over. And if you allow those dogs to take over, they will. 
they're opportunists. They will take over. As you can see, look, all of them are swimming now, even the youngsters. They're all loving it. It was a hot day, midges were biting, but these dogs are absolutely loving it. And they're traveling in the dog box. And they travel for thousands of miles on this trip. Never messed once in the box. There were no dogs being sick in the box. They just take it in their stride. And that's what you need to do with these dogs. They need to be put in the environment that they can cope with everything. And they, they, they don't have the fear and, and the nervous side of them. And they, when they take you out, when you take them out, there's got to be trust there. And if there's not trust in you and your dog, that dog's gonna look at everything else in a different light. But if that dog trusts you and follows you, follows you blindly, really, it'll do anything for you because that dog adores you and wants to be with you. And that's the important thing. These dogs just love to be with me because the fun element, like I said before, comes with me. What a wonderful place to stay, look, in Scotland. Uh, this is our bed and breakfast on a farm that we know that we stay regular when we go to Scotland. One of the most beautiful spots, I think. If I could build a house and plant it somewhere, it would be this house here where they've planted it. The view from their house is stunning across the lake with the hills both sides. You've got red deer, you've got, it's, it's so beautiful. It's absolutely a beautiful place to be. I'm so privileged when we go there, they like the fact that I've got dogs. They like the fact that um, I'm a countryman. And at the end of the day, we've got a lovely relationship with this, um, lovely people for, with this bed and breakfast. And it's a pleasure to stay there. I don't want to be in the big posh hotels. I want to be away from the madding crowd. And that's what I really like. Um, I took Sue with me on this trip and that's quite rare because normally I just go on my own because I'm doing training with my dogs. But I took Sue and I wanted to show her the Isle of Skye. So it was a working holiday at the same time as doing the training seminar as well as having a bit of a break with Sue and showing her Scotland. And Scotland was, half of it was closed because of the COVID. Um, most places weren't open and when they were open, it was for hotel guests only, so that it was quite difficult this, this time getting food where normally you get food, no problem at all. Um, but we managed, no problem at all, it was great. And it was great to see people up in Scotland and meet people up in Scotland who are on the Patreon site. And then to um, meet people at Westmoreland on the way back down again and do another weekend's training there, that was nice. Nice group of people. And I didn't even have t much time to actually take my dogs out. It was just a quick run around the field and back in because it was more important to work with the owner's dogs, the member's dogs that are in the group and see those dogs and let those dogs have the experience out there in that new environment that perhaps they've not been to. And the reason I go to Scotland is not only just for the scenery and, and I love Scotland, it's because they've got rabbits in certain areas of Scotland. Not all areas of Scotland have got rabbits, but there's certain areas got rabbits, but you can't work the dogs 10 days non-stop on the rabbits, you'll just burn them out. So we, we might do one day on the rabbits and then two days off and then back on the rabbits and a bit more on tin. And then we go on the partridge. And if it's in season, we might go on the pheasant as well. But uh, at the end of the day, it's giving the dogs the experience. These young dogs have never traveled like this, but they travel no problem at all. They got used to it, absolutely took it in their stride. And in this video here, you've got my dogs, but you've got two clients dogs as well that have come with us to go to Scotland and gain the experience of the hunting on the rabbit scent. And that's what about, what beautiful scenery that is. Look at that, absolutely fantastic scenery. And that makes the holiday to me, that makes the holiday in itself, that it's different. It's not Cornwall. Cornwall has got its own beauty. Dartmoor is rugged, and I don't think you can beat Dartmoor in some ways, but you can't, you can't get this down in Cornwall. This is beautiful. And so I'm so privileged to live where I live, and yet I travel so far to go and see other places and train in other areas where other people are. And that's the great thing about my job is taking me all over the world being a gun dog trainer whether it's doing training seminars or one-to-ones where people invite you out to their place and you you fly out there and you 
spend a couple of days with them and see the world. And I'm so privileged that I've got so many friends and clients that uh, have got the same interest as me, the love of the sport, of working our dogs and training our dogs. And that's what it's about. This isn't about pet people's dogs. This is about working dogs, working dogs in the field. These videos might be quite boring to some people. Some people are looking for only tuition of how to get your dog to do this or how to get your dog to do that. But to me, these are memories. These are memories of the trips we've had and the trips we take over the years of meeting new people that we've not met before. People who become friends because we've got the same interest. And that's the nice thing about traveling, traveling and meeting people who watch my videos on a regular basis. As if, it's as if they know me, is they actually believe like, because they watch so many of my videos, they know so much about me, but actually meeting people in person, face to face, you can't beat it, it's wonderful, it's lovely. And we are so privileged to meet so many nice people and their dogs in my world of gun dog training of helping people improve with their dogs and getting them to a very good standard. And that's what it's about everyone. It's not about who's got the best dog. It's about improving with your dog. It's about getting your dog to a very high standard that you are over the moon with. And so much of dog training is about obedience. And yet it's obedience at the right time. Why not let the dogs be dogs? And you'll have a far happier dog if you know how to put the control in at the right time, rather than forcing the control in and suppressing the dog. People say these dogs are manic. Um, anybody who's got a Spaniel, good luck. I'm telling you, these dogs are special. Train them right, they're fantastic.